now. We're in this together. You, me, all of us here at Human Design Life uh, dot live. So we're partners in your success. We have a team of individuals who are here connecting together to share, to offer support, camaraderie, learning, growing together. This is part of the journey. One of the things I love so much about uh, social media is having a community of like-minded individuals that you can come together with to discuss our mastery of the system, our experimentation, our learning, our journey. What's it like for you? So one of the things that really impacted me when I learned from Alakanandia is how to do this living your design guide um, train trainer work is one of the things that he said something like how can you help another if you don't if you don't have if you don't understand the helplessness or the choicelessness and that is very triggering when we say choicelessness very triggering especially in our day and age where there's all, a lot of this um you know i create my own reality through law of attraction and nobody wants to be um, I seen as helpless or choiceless. It can seem seem on the surface very disempowering if you don't help the person make sense of what it means to live in a vehicle that is destined for a particular experience or has a karma with others to interface with for a particular experience. That experience is part of the learning and the nature of being human in this life experience witnessing watching we can start to grok grok is a term i love um, that helps us understand grok is like comprehending comprehending so deeply it's like you're eating it you've ingested it you've digested it the word helplessness choicelessness it's a huge triggering for someone who has not studied the fundamental mechanics of human design and has not witnessed how choiceless we are to the expression of our nature, our being, particularly in interaction with others or the transits. Our life and this experience, the witnessing, the watching, the woundings, the suffering, the pain, the joys, the sorrows, the simplicity of being, is watching the witnessing of you being you and the surrendering to choicelessness is an exaltation it's not a detriment it's a freedom to be in alignment with truth it's not a death sentence and in this course together we're going to have time to discuss and to share in the joys and the sorrows of our journey because you need to know 70% more than your students, according to Ra. 70% more, that's a lot. Especially in this day and age where there are so many people enthused and excited and sharing about human design on their Instagram, becoming overnight celebrities by creating their own courses and having a great following. When in fact, they may not have delved into the depths of the mechanics. They even create their own certification programs using misappropriated words that are not in alignment with the energetics that are there within the circuitry, stream, gates, centers, what have you. So it's very, very important, more important now, more than ever, that you solidify the foundations of what this system has to offer before you move into becoming a living your design guide. And for that reason, every person that comes into my practice, I make sure that they are supported with the foundational elements of what they need to know in order to answer or handle the constant barrage of questions that you get from newcomers so that you feel confident and self-assured in your recognition of how this beautiful body graph and the mandala works, not just from theory, but from practice. Now for Ra, he says all learning, real learning takes seven years. It takes seven years to change approximately all the cells in the body. We live in seven year cycles. 
the moment that you begin to come to your own nature, the moment that you allow your body to live its life without resistance, you begin a deep process of deconditioning. Seven years later, you emerge quite literally a new being, yourself. So the most important thing is to recognize you do not have to be anything other than what you already are right here, right now, because we're all on this deconditioning journey and this path. It doesn't end in seven years because we're constantly being reconditioned by the people, places, circumstances, events, the global background frequency. It's always bombarding us with neutrinos that are not our unique inherent birth right nature. One of the biggest uh, concerns I had when I first became a living your design guide and uh, I was offered a position at Jovian Archive, I went to my own living your design teacher and Carol Zimmerman at IHGS. And I was so concerned that I would give everybody my not self. And she laughed and she said, Honey, it's something like, honey, it's okay. I gave everyone my not self too in the beginning. And that's one of the most beautiful opportunities for learning. I can tell you, uh, since 2014, being a guide myself, every time I taught that center, my bugaboo, totally open ashna, which is about conceptualization. Every time I taught that center, I could feel the triggering inside, the fear of being found out. What if I, what if they discover I really don't know what I'm talking about, says the not mind inside the head, fear of ignorance or fear of not being able to explain my insights. That triggering of the mind identifying with that voice and thinking that there was something wrong when I totally drew a blank. No, when you totally draw a blank, it's just that you're getting overwhelmed by so much awareness going in this direction and that direction and this direction. When you don't know what to think, do I have a total disconnect with regards to what this person is saying right now? The shift, the difference is now I can say, hey, I'm drawing a blank. Let me go check my notes. Let me get back to you. Let's go ask or can you go ask this person or that person? Because I don't know. And yet the biggest fear of the undefined ashna is being found out of ignorance, of stupidity, of not knowing. And instead of the mind ruling the life with that fear, leading one to try and hold on to concepts that don't serve them or argue other people's concepts when they're really not sure, pretending to be certain rather than being open minded and being able to celebrate that I don't no. When we don't know, it means there's something to learn. And isn't that exciting? So the huge, tremendous shift that you can have in your own design by teaching this knowledge, this LYD knowledge over and over and over again, if it's right for you. I know it was for me for many, many, many years to be able to walk hand in hand, side by side with my students through the mechanics of the fundamental basis of how these centers work, not only in general, but in specificity in alignment with their design, asking for their sharing of their truth, of their witnessing, of their watching, making the unconscious conscious, such a gift. If you're somebody who is tickled by psychology, this is the most fascinating thing you will ever come across with regards to human design. The awareness of the truths within, the witnessing and the watching of the mechanical structure of the nature of mind, how easy it is to pinpoint how mind operates because it works like clockwork. It has rigid, strict structures of how it obeys life. And so when we can deconstruct that part of the work that we're going to be doing is entering into the first initial uh, awarenesses of how rave psychology, human design psychology works, because that is part of your work is to be aware, not only of your mind, but how is this person's mind working? Because the mind is not you. 
The mind is witness. The mind is watching. The mind is a collection of conditioning that is not the sum full totality of what you are here to live and breathe and be in this life. So you're going to learn and know yourself from the ground up. That is the only way to really deconstruct how this works is to use your experience as your laboratory, as your playground, as your discovery zone. That's what we're going to be doing together. Now, life is a duality when we talk about human design. Ross says, in my professional work, I have given between five and 6,000 individual readings, design analyses, whatever that has been. And regardless of culture or country, there is one prevailing disease. It is called self-hatred. Self-hatred varies in intensity from being just beneath the surface of the consciousness to being full-blown. It is the most human of ironies that self-hatred is truly misplaced because these people do not know themselves. They're hating the wrong person, disappointed with the wrong person, dissatisfied with the wrong person because they identify with the mind inside of the head about the self rather than the true authentic beingness that they are here to be. So you it is fundamentally true that we are required to master not only the mechanics of human design, but our mechanics to interface correctly. If someone's not for you, it's not personal. If someone comes to my class and they don't like the way that I do things, no problem, full uh, refund. Goodbye. Good luck. Have a great day. Have a great life. I'm not for you if my way triggers you, if it doesn't work for you. I get that. And so you should as well with you doing this work with others. If something isn't working, it's not your fault. It's not their fault. There is no fault. This is a no fault manual for living, for life. Every one of us has our own fractal family. Every one of us has our own way of being. So in accepting and aligning to your truth, your mechanics, your structure, your form, you have the awareness of your ability to be the guide that that other person is looking for.